This conference will now be recorded. Wonderful. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to AF APS uh, Spam Chat. My name is Heidi. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Monday. I hope everyone's coming off a refreshing weekend. Happy June 1. And June 1 is actually part two of National or International Dinosaur Day, if you can believe it. It's a holiday that needs two days, two weeks apart. And so Dr. John Note is joining us from Canada. He's an APS member, and he joined us a couple weeks back to talk about dinosaurs on stamps. It was part one, and lucky us, he's back for part two on this uh, International Dinosaur Day. So thank you so much. We can't wait to get it started. Friends, I'd like to say thank you to all of our APS members for joining us and for your membership, your contribution, and your generosity makes this possible. We'd like to invite you to uh, identify someone in your life who's an everyday hero. Um, we have a program called Stamps for Champs. So if there's someone that you know, whether it's a nurse, a cashier, a, a, a telephone worker, et cetera, someone who's been out there during the COVID and the, and the lockdown that you'd like to nominate, we're giving away digital memberships to uh, pay homage to their service while we've been safe at home. So check out uh, Stamps for Champs at uh, stamps.org. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Node, for joining us and for being a member. And I, I made mention on Friday that we, I really appreciate how many APS members are, are coming on as guests and as presenters. We really appreciate that. That's a, that's a terrific way to recruit for the 2020. So thank you so much for coming on and for presenting this uh, part two of this really popular uh, thematic, Dinosaurs on Stamps. Friends, if you have uh, questions or if you want to use the chat box, go ahead. We'll get back to it during Q&A. If you prefer for me to read your question or comment, just put it in a private message to me. You can find Heidi or uh, organizer, however that comes down in the Dropbox. All right, and without further ado, thank you, Dr. Node. Go ahead. Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks ever so much for joining for part two. So in part one, we looked at an overview of dino philatelic history, and then we talked about the nightmare world of Cinderella's. So dunes from the Middle East, Russian issues, African issues that are still ongoing. And we, I showed you that there were over 8,000 sort of fake issues out there to do with dinosaurs. And it must be the same for all of the other thematics as well. We also looked at, at Disney, and then we looked at some very bad art indeed. But part two, we go, we've done the ugly and the bad, and now we're doing the good. So we're gonna revel in some amazing dinosaur stamp designs. We're gonna look at some original artwork. We're gonna look at some very nice errors and also a few fakes. We're gonna look at dinosaur-related postmarks. I'm gonna show you some really unusual philatelic items. In fact, they're so unusual, you'll wonder whether they really are philatelic or not. And then I'm gonna finish off with just a little case study on some drama that happened in Canada. So we had some quite interesting philatelic action back in 2015. So let's press on. So we're gonna start off by just looking at some of what I consider to be the best dinosaur art out there. So let's begin with my favorite set. And this is from the Maldives in 1972. Uh, it was designed by the Israeli Shamir brothers who have designed hundreds and hundreds of stamps. And there's actually a lovely website dedicated to them. They're no longer alive, but there's a website with full of stamps that they've designed from around the world. Now, this issue from the Maldives, it's a little bit dubious. It's like so many of these earlier issues where were they Cinderella's or not? But I actually have one posterly used example, which is I'm just pointing out down here. So you can see there is the Stegosaurus on an envelope that's postally used that was sent from the Maldives to the USA. So this is a, a, a real set of stamps. And the reason I like it is because it's a very simple images. What they've done is they've, they've crystallized uh, artwork that was uh, drawn from some of the artists at the time. And there was a lot less paleo artists around in the, in the 50s, 60s and 70s. So they didn't have that much material to work with. But as you can see, they've used a lot of material from Rudolf Zellinger and you can, identify very easily. I've had to turn some of these images around, but they basically copied some of those designs, but simplified them. There was also a, a 
this mystical sheet that was done there was a, not many of these sheets were issued but they were issued for advertising purposes so they're on different paper they're not perforated but i always wonder what their status was and i only found out recently from the paleophilately website that they were actually meant for advertising rather than for consumption i tried to find the original artwork for these only to find out from a chap in the the us who whose father was actually working in the the factory where these the stamps were produced that all of these stamp artwork designs were destroyed in uh, the late 1990s when the, the factory was closed, which is just so sad. So many, many of these kind of pretty postal issues, uh, and it's not available to get the original artwork. Another stunning set that I, I have a very soft spot for is from Japan from 1977, and it shows the, it's the national centenary of their, their postal museum, uh, their, their um, Natural History Museum, which actually Natural History Museum 100 year anniversaries are very good for dinosaur stamps. As we'll see, there's a few others that will come up. Now, what's nice about this is that, first of all, it was only one stamp, but it's beautifully designed. It shows a, a Futaba Suzuki or a, actually a Wellesiosaurus. So this is the animal here. It's a kind of plesiosaur. This is the actual skeleton shown down here. And the, the Japanese did a lot of stuff with this stamp. So there are over 30 different first day cover designs, which have a lovely kind of Asian feel to them. They're a little bit different to what we design in the West, as shown down here. And then I love this special engraved metal sheet that was made for this issue. And I've only ever seen this for sale twice, this, this little folder here. And once I've seen it on a first day cover as well, and I have the first day cover. But you can see what they've done is that they've engraved in metal and then produced this metallic image of the, the Wellesiosaurus. There's a lot of balance here between first day covers and posterly used covers. And I personally, I love the first day covers because I love the pretty caches that they have on them. But when I, you talk to people who are in the know about philately, then they'll say that actually a, a posterly used cover is far more valuable because first day covers can be printed, they can have these automatic hand stamps, and they, they've never been through the post. So how philatelic really are they? Whereas these issues really are philatelic. So I put in this one from Russia. This was a set of five stamps that was issued in 1990. And you can see what they've done here is they put a lot of these stamps on. It looks fantastic, this cover. And there's lots of extra little stamps on there, like Recommande, Registered, it's a letter, it came from Tallinn. And so there's lots and lots of postal information on here. So really better in a lot of ways than a first day cover. And this, this uh, set from San Tome down here on the right, this was never issued on a first day cover. So to get the whole set and the sheet on there, I've got two of these at home. And uh, I, I just love the designs of them. And I love this beautiful postmark that they used as well, a very nice design. And then what you can also do if you want to have posterly used covers is that you can ask the dealers to send them to you. So when a set was issued by Mongolia, I found a Mongolia stamp dealer and I asked him to send me this envelope, which I just paid him for the stamps and he put them on put the stamps on there and send them to me. So I have this postal use version with this Mongolia stamp issue, which once again is very, very difficult to get hold of. And just a few more examples here. I'm not gonna go through all of these in details because we'll come back to some of them, but you can see there's our Wellesiosaurus again, looking great. Here's a set from Vietnam that was issued in 1984. There was never a first day cover for this set, but this shows the whole set of eight stamps on one cover, which is just beautiful. This is another example where I got a dealer to send me these stamps from Iraq. I wasn't convinced that they were real stamps, but you can see they absolutely are real stamps. And this is sent from Iraq through to me in Canada here. And then another nice example here is from Afghanistan. So you would also think, were they really used in Afghanistan? Is Afghanistan the kind of place where dinosaur stamps are used postally? But yes, they were. And here we have a, a, something that was sent through to me in 1990, just within a year of when it was first issued. Old first day covers can be very, very difficult to get hold of. And all of these first day covers here were for, about from 20, 30, 40 years ago. And at that time, when I was started collecting back, back around 30 years ago, it was I, there was no internet and you'd have to write to the dealers to try and get hold of some of these items. And ones like these two first day covers here from Mozambique and this Mali 1984 first day cover, I've only ever seen them for sale once. So it's not like they come on the market very often. And you're up, up, when you try and find these things and when you try and purchase them, you're not just battling with the other topical collectors who collect dinosaurs, but I'm also battling with everybody who collects Mozambique or people who collect Mali. So any country collectors, we're up against each other because we're both interested in the same material. 
And I only want their dinosaurs. I don't want all their stamps, but they want all of the, obviously all the stamps from that country. So it can be very, very difficult to get a hold of these. So if you see them, I think you just have to be prepared to really bid up if you're going to find them on eBay or something like that to have a chance of adding them to your collection. I put these in because it's funny that I, some of my favorite sheets and my favorite designs of stamps, they all seem to be green. And maybe that's because green's just a great color. But uh, certainly it seems to bring out vividly the kind of feel of dinosaurs and them walking through vegetation. So I've got some examples here from Germany on the left hand side. So this is uh, another centenary of the Humboldt Museum for Natural, Natural Science. And uh, you can see I actually went to visit this museum. And this is a ticket that I also had to buy not just to get in, but to have a, a photographic license to be able to take photographs there as well. You had to buy a, a kind of ticket that allowed you to be able to take photographs. But they issued these beautiful set of stamps. I'm just showing the sheet here, which shows these Kentrosauruses in the middle, and then has some really nice designs around the outside. And then another design from 2008 that was supposed to promote youth, uh, the interest in philately and interest in dinosaurs in the youth of Germany. On the right-hand side here, we have a lovely design from issued by uh, South Africa in 1982, which shows Karoo fossils. And I love this design and I love the way that it was done around the outside. So I contacted the artist, a lady called Sheila Nowers, who lives down in the Cape. And I asked her if she'd consider taking on a commission for me. And she actually painted this design for me. So it's got the same surround. And then she's taken one of the dinosaurs from the stamps and put that in the middle there. So really beautiful piece of artwork. Maxi cards are another another way of showcasing uh, art designs, and uh, this is a beautiful design here from Portugal. And I, I love the fact that this is this slightly surreal image of a dinosaur, and yet scientifically correct as well. And the whole way this issue was designed is just beautiful. And the fact that they have this dinosaur walking across with its footprints, which have been found in Portugal, is very scientifically accurate. San Marino here, they are probably one of the first countries to issue. Um, at, actual maxi cards. And so this is from 1966, but their maxi cards date back to at least the 40s. And I went to a stamp show and I found this one maxi card with the plesiosaur on it from a set of nine. And I spent the next 15 years writing to dealers in Italy to try and find the rest of the set. And when I finally got hold of the set, it was only 20 euros for the set of nine postcards and I ended up completing it. And as you can see, they're absolutely fabulous designs and they're, and they're somewhat dated. You know, the dinosaurs are dragging their tails on the ground. They're not looking very active. They're looking quite stolid and solid, but uh, still beautiful piece of work. And then we've also got maxi cards here from Libya and Angola, just as examples of the range of uh, countries that are issuing these cards. I put in progressive proofs and overprints. These are pretty rare items. And in fact, some sets, there's only maybe five of these or 10 sets of these that are out there. So they're very hard to get hold of. But when you do, they're lovely because they show you how the stamps are put together. So you start off obviously with these brown designs, then you add some blue, then you add some different blues. And here as well, we're showing in this Manama set that you start off with the individual colors and then they overlay these colors to make the final design for the stamps. So it just gives you a nice idea of how they're put together. You do have to be a bit careful. I've seen quite a few forgeries of these over the years and particularly when you see the photographic style where they show these kind of photo sheets. I, I don't really trust those myself. I just put in overprints here. There's overprints are quite common from countries. So this, these, this is a Dahomey issue originally, and the Dahomey has been blacked out and it's been used in Benin instead, which is the adjacent country. Um, they're typically very, very expensive. So some of these can be up to $100 each for these overprints. And I, I mean, I do have some in my collection, but it's not something that I would die to have. I put in signed items here as well as another example of something that you might look out for. And if you do ever get to meet any of these artists or they have a show or something like that, it's well worth going to see them and, and getting your covers signed. You can also send them the covers sometimes and they'll sign them for you. I've got this cover here from Tristan de Kuna, which was signed by the artist as a hurricane relief fund. And it's actually the very, very first set of a, a set of uh, 10 first day covers that he signed. So that's pretty cool. And that I just did a help me call out to the Tristan de Kuna Philatelic Society and they, they said, yeah, we have this one here if you're interested. And it wasn't an expensive cover to buy. This cover here, this set of stamps from 1997 was uh, drawn by James Gurney, who did the Dinotopia books, which were very famous. They had their own TV show as well. And you can see that he signed it nicely here in the middle. And then some up more signed material here from Sweden. And then at the bottom here, I've just put down some of the other kind of items that you might see up for sale from these sets. 
So this is a kind of black proof. This is a kind of group color proof for a set from Guinea. This is a, a blue test print from France, although this was really issued, I feel, more for collectors because it's quite easy to obtain. And this set here, I've got a set of eight stamps from Lesotho where half the designs are the wrong value because they were just trying them out and trialing them out and seeing what looked good on the stamp. So this is a, a very, very unique item. A, a, it doesn't look that amazing when you look at them, but uh, it's cool that this is not the final design that was used. Okay, we're now going to move on to my holy grail. Of all of the aspects of dinosaurs on stamps, collecting the original artwork to me is the most valuable and exciting. And I've just put in one example here to kick us off from Fujira, from one of these dune sets. So really not a very official stamp, but nonetheless, look at this beautiful piece of artwork that was created to make the stamp. So you may remember from part one that I talked about the first dinosaur set that I ever bought, which was from Poland, 1965, sort of made for collectors, but definitely a, a official stamps. And long time later, maybe around 20 years ago, I, I found one of the paintings for sale. It wasn't even a dinosaur, it was a, ma a mammal that was for sale on a, a, an art auction site in Poland. So I contacted them to try and buy this item and uh, I asked where it had come from. And they said, oh, well, Mr. Heydrich actually brought it in and sold it to us and he's the, he's the artist. And I said, well, would you mind asking if he has any more? And he had many more of his original pieces of artwork. So these are about a foot square, something like that, these items, it's not like they're very small. And uh, I ended up buying four or five of them and as you can see they're beautiful pieces of work and this is what the final stamps designs look like and uh, so he's done all of this work he also designed a lot of uh, things like banknotes and coins for poland as well but i ended up buying a few of these i couldn't buy them all because i couldn't afford them but uh, lovely 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 artwork more original examples of artwork the one at the top here is from north korea and uh, i have the set of all five designs to the stamps. And what's nice about these is that, as you can see, the, color, the final colors that were used for the stamps are completely different to the paintings that were, that were used to create them. So they actually, every one of the designs is completely different colors to the final stamp. We also have this uh, design here, which is a cachet for a first day cover from Tanzania for a set from 1997. And what is really ironic about this is that I, I got this item from paleophilately.eu, right, the, the image from their website, because I have the original artwork but I cannot get hold of the first day cover. So how ironic is that? I have the art, but I can't find the, the stamp material, the philatelic material. I've also shown here where you have these photographic designs. So these are, they're not really hand painted. Originally, this painting was done by uh, Burian way back in time, maybe, maybe 80 years ago, something like that. And they've just taken his design and made it into a, into a stamp. So they've taken the photograph of his artwork, They've overlain some material here, which is basically done with Letraset, for those of you who remember Letraset from the 1980s. And so it's not really painting, but it is the original work that was put together to make the stamp. And then this one here from Mali, I would love to get the whole set of these, but I just managed to get hold of this one. Once again, lovely to see it, and you can see how it developed into the stamp itself. Ponga, I've got some quite a few uh, examples of postal uh, original material from the artwork from Tonga and uh, I just wanted to say that when you look at the quality of the artwork for the Stegosaurus and the, the skull in front of it you can't distinguish this from art this could easily be in an art gallery it's beautifully done heavily detailed this one over here is for a Pesiosaurus and this is about two feet across so this would be a great thing to have on your wall and then this one, I put this in because I can guarantee that none of you have ever seen this design because it was an unadopted 90s design from Moldova. So this was put together to be issued as a stamp, a stamp sheet. There were going to be a set of stamps as well. And for some reason, I don't know whether the government said no, but they decided, no, we're not going to do this after all. So I have this painting and the mock-up of what the stamp sheet would look like. And this is it. There is nothing else in the world that matches this at all. And I, I bought this on an, an auction years ago, and I was kind of dubious because it wasn't issued, but I'm so glad that I did because it's very interesting to have something that hasn't been seen out there. Here's some more original artwork, and this is from an artist who actually, draw, he paints naval work. So he paints ships, Brian Cool, and his prices range from $350 to around $12,000 for his ship paintings. And Brian is still alive, and I believe living in the UK. However, 
sometime back in the past, so around 1991, when this set of dinosaur stamps was issued, he must have had a friend who said, Brian, would you mind just painting me some dinosaurs and sending them to me as first day covers? So he sent these covers to his friend. They've all been print, they have their first day cover stamp on them as well. And so they're dinosaurs that are painted by somebody who's much more familiar with painting ships. And I think he's done a wonderful job, but it's it's kind of funny because they, they, they have this very unique feel because they, they have the real charm about them because they're not drawn by somebody who's trying to make them into something scary and dinosaur. They're almost like an, an art lesson, the way they've been put together. And I have five of these all together. I think they're, they're great designs. I talked earlier about commissioning paintings and contacting the artists who designed the stamps. And one of the things I did was I contacted Jennifer Toombs in the UK, and she was a very famous stamp, art, stamp artist. Sadly, she died last year, but she painted one of my very favorite sets, which was from Lesotho in 1970, which is, this is a, a photograph of the actual footprints from Moyeni. And she put together this set of beautiful stamps, really stunning designs, striking, striking colors. And uh, so I contacted her and I said, would you mind recreating one of these stamps as a painting? So this is her original mock-up that she did. And this is the final painting that she did for me, which is uh, just one of the proudest possessions in my collection, because it's so lovely to think that she put it together and she painted it. And she was never really recognized. I mean, she designed over a thousand stamps in her life and she was never really recognized for the wonderful work that she did. Here's another example of an artist commission. When this set was issued in uh, New Zealand in 1993, I contacted the artist, Jeffrey Cox, and said, could you do some paintings for me? And the, the, the price was not expensive. I, I, I can share prices with people if they're interested, but it, typically you're paying one to $200 for these kind of paintings. So really, compared to works of art that you might find in a gallery, they're very, very reasonable. So I, I had him just draw three of the different designs for me. I think this is probably my favorite, the, the um, the meat eater roaring at his prey. And then Sergei uh, Krasovsky, he uh, designed some stamps for Canada in uh, 2015. And I contacted him and said, would you be interested in doing some pictures for me? And he said, well, I really do all of this stuff online. I don't normally draw the things out. And I asked him if he'd do as a favor to me, whether he'd draw some pictures for me in uh, pencil. And he did these incredible designs for me. So uh, thank you, Sergei. They are just amazing. And so this is the booklet with this Dimetrodon on it. And then he did this picture of the Dimetrodon for me as well. And he also sent me a beautiful art, art dinosaur art book from uh, Russia, all in Russian, but the pictures are absolutely stunning, which just came along with it. And he's, he's also signed the booklet here for me. So fantastic job that he did. This is a funny one. So I bought this painting years ago from a, a gentleman called Doug Henderson, who lives uh, very close to Yellowstone National Park. And Doug does these incredible dinosaur paintings. And I bought this one because my daughter's middle name is Plessy for Plesiosaurus. All my kids have dinosaur middle names. So my other kids are Harry Rex, obviously where, the, where that comes from, and Elsa Mayer for Mayosaurus. So uh, my youngest daughter, Arizona Plessy, uh, so for Plesiosaurus. So I bought this painting and only to find out later on but this painting has been used twice in kind of fake stamps. So this is particularly fake. This is just, a, you could almost print this at home, but it's uh, it's for sale on eBay right now if anybody's interested. So this was issued by Uman in uh, the Ukraine, totally fake. And then this is pretty fake as well. This is from Malawi in 2011. And there is my painting proudly sitting on the, on the stamp. So you can see that if you own the painting, you certainly don't own the philatelic rights to that painting as well. Let's move on to look at some dinosaur errors now. And this is uh, an example from the UK where you can see that there's a dramatic perforation shift. This, this crow who is kind of looking at the Archaeopteryx is sitting in the middle here. But in this design, there's the edge of the stamp running pretty much right down the middle. So the crow is here and his tail is on the other end of the stamp. So beautiful perforation shift. So we're back in Poland, 1965, that famous set that I mentioned earlier. And the reason we're here is because it's just chock a block with errors. Everywhere you look, there are errors for this stamp, which are these stamps, which is really quite cool, I think. So the kind of errors that we're seeing here are color shifts. So here you can see the trees have been shifted. And uh, here the, the other green tree has been shifted over. You can see that there's missing values here. So no 90 there, there's a 90 over here. But this one, the, the, steg, the green of the steggy has been shifted over. This one's missing its uh, value. This one, the value is printed upside down. 
And this one, the tail is kind of dragging over the edge of the stamp. Uh, this one here, uh, color shift, missing black, missing value. And then this one here is my favorite. This is what we in dinosaur topical country call the headless dinosaur, because this long neck over here, his head is actually shifted over and you can see it's featuring there on the other side of the stamp. So it's like that he's been beheaded. And I've seen this error for sale for 900 euros, but uh, I don't think any error is worth that much. It's lovely to have them, but uh, that's too much money to pay. Some more errors here, including some nice ones from the US. And this is a very famous one from the 1989 dinosaur issue where it's missing black. So you can see on the little one there, the little black values there, and these values are missing off uh, our, our sheet here. And uh, that's for sale right now for around $400. That's what that error is worth. Here's a perforation shift from that 1997 set. So Steggy's almost lost his head on this one, very, very close. And then this is going all the way back to 1970. And this is, I, I showed this one last time from the Zallinger mural at Yale. So this is part of that, that mural. But this set is, this stamp is particularly prone to color shifts. And you can see that the blue color shift is here with the head moving over and the head moving over here. And there's a red color shift. So Steggy's back plates have moved over. And these Allosauruses, they've, the red coloration has moved almost right off the dinosaur in that case. So very, very popular shifts. In fact, it's almost more likely that you buy the stamp that is going to have a color shift than it isn't. Uh, the other one I'm going to point to here is this one from Iraq. Iraq. So I showed you the, the used cover. But in this example, you can see there's been a very dramatic green shift. So this is what the, the stamp is supposed to look like at the top here. And this is what it actually looks like, where it almost looks like a, there's a wash of green in the background because all the colors have shifted there. And now I just put these in just because this is quite funny, really. So this is a first day cover from Dufar in 1980. And what they've done is that they basically made this cover here using a laser printer, which did not even exist in 1980. They put first day cover on there and then they just stuck the sheet on. And one of the ways that you can tell immediately that this is dubious is because these, these postmarks do not extend over the edge of the stamp onto the cover. So yeah, that's completely faked up first day cover. And I bought that, I paid $6 for it just because I thought it was kind of funny that they'd, that they'd had the audacity to try and sell this thing. And then there's, there's lots of material out there which is kind of fake fakes, I call them, which is they're made for collector where they've kind of faked up the misperforations. So I don't believe for a minute that they, they made this mistake by accident. I think they made them on purpose and they just did it to try and fleece some more money out of collectors. Okay, let's move on to postmarks. So that, we're gonna start off with fossil localities. So that, I've got three examples here. Fairness Art in Belgium where 27 iguanodons, so these are the, some of the skeletons, were found in a pocket of sandstone in a coal mine. And you can see that there's a beautiful Iguanodon postmark on here, the Museum of the Iguanodon in Bernasart, the Bernasart postmark itself. And you can find some of these covers with not just this cachet, but with the stamps as well. I've just put the stamps down here to show that the stamps have the same design. This one here is from Huendon, dinosaur country. And they've got a nice postmark here, which shows Mataburrosaurus, which is a great Australian name for a dinosaur. And then this, these ones here are from Solnhofen, the Solnhofen limestone, which is where Archaeopteryx was discovered, which is probably the most famous bird in the world, in my opinion, the fossil bird. Hey, postmark locality. So these have the name dinosaur in the name. So the Dinosaur City post office was open for around 20 years at the Grand Canyon Cavern. So in the kind of 60s and 70s, it was open down in uh, Arizona. And I've got this really lovely example with a very clear postmark here showing Dinosaur City. So you can still find these online. Uh, I paid $60, I think, for the last one that I bought. And there's two different postmarks. So this is the kind of normal postmark here, and they also have a little red postmark, which also shows Dinosaur City, Arizona on the postmark. And I've just put in these here for, for fun. So we've got Fossil, Oregon here with the Fossil postmark and the Petrified Forest postmark here from Arizona as well. Now there's another place called Dinosaur in the States, which is still open for business, and that's Dinosaur Colorado. This is looking at the, the, the entrance sign as you come into the city limit here, and all of the streets in Dinosaur have dinosaur names, Stegosaurus Boulevard and things like that. And uh, the reason it's there is because it's the home of the Dinosaur National Monument. And this is showing part of the Dinosaur National Monument with all of these bones here, which are being excavated by these uh, paleontologists. And there's a nice example of a Camarasaurus skull from there. So this is a, a first day cover from that 1997 set. 
which has got Vernal, Dinosaur, Jensen, these are Grand Junction, these are all great dinosaur localities in their own right. But if you send your stamped address envelope to the post office and you ask them if they'll put a nice postmark on it for you, you can see here that they sent this to me. I sent them these with, and I said, please, can you stick these stamps on? And please, can you then send it to my address and use this postmark? And Dinosaur Post Office is right there from Dinosaur Colorado. So you can make these yourself. You don't have to wait to see them online. I just put these in as some examples of museum postmarks from around the world. And these are drawn from this uh, Michael Cogan's excellent paleophilosophy.eu website. And then I wanted to include this one because this is a one in a kind postmark. So what happened was that there was a World Dinosaur Stamp Exhibition in Korea in 2010 and they issued lots of dinosaur stamps. There's hundreds of covers out there, but they had a hand stamp for the exhibition. And this is the hand stamp here. And I found for sale on eBay very cheaply the original hand stamp itself. So I have that original hand stamp together with one of these envelopes with the, where the hand stamp's been used. So this is, a, once again, absolutely unique dinosaur item. Okay, let's have a look at a few unusual dinosaur postal items. This is a, a calendar card from 1991 from the British Antarctic Territory that was just issued as a, a publicity stunt. I guess if you're in the Falkland Islands, then there's not really a, a lot of ways of advertising your wares. Um, first of all, we're going to start off with some 3D stamps. And this was issued in, in Germany uh, quite a while ago. And it's two original things here. First of all, it had a dinosaur hologram on the presentation pack. And secondly, it had one of these auto stereograms. So if you guys want to try and defocus your eyes, then there is a three-dimensional dinosaur facing to the right that you can see in here. And I couldn't find a picture showing it. So if anybody wants to look afterwards, this will be posted online. You can stop it and you can have a look. I was able to look into this, defocus my eyes and see the dinosaur there. There's also a 3D dinosaur stamp. The first 3D dinosaur stamp was issued in 2012, and that was the honor for that goes to Turkey. And it comes in a special little book, which you can buy, and uh, it's great reading, and uh, yeah, fascinating stamp that's in there as well. Another innovation here was uh, from quite recently, 2014, 2017, where they, these are luminous dinosaurs. So if you look at these under a UV light, you can see this one here, this is what the sheet looks like in daylight. And this is what the sheet looks like under a ultraviolet light. And then this is the one from Hong Kong. That's from China. And this is from Hong Kong. And you can see that they have these, the dinosaurs really pop out when you put them under an ultraviolet light. Now, this set here that had quite a few innovations. It also had these very brightly colored postmarks. So use red postmarks rather than using a black postmark. And they had a set of 3D maxi cards, which I, I didn't pay a lot of money for them, but I've noticed that they've really rocketed in price. And I don't know whether that's because there's just a few of them were issued. It's a, it's a good question. There's a bit of a problem with maxi cards that you also wonder whether these are official or unofficial. There's Some of the sets have 20 or 30 different sets of maxi cards, and it's very hard to know whether they're issued by the post office. I try and stick to buying just the official ones. Another nice uh, bit, bit of design here from the Chinese set is that if you look very carefully, you can see in the perforations, they actually had the kind of dinosaur for that stamp. So these are all different perforations that were used for the different dinosaurs. So along the edge of the stamp, there was a tiny little perforation there in a dinosaur shape. Um, we talked about jigsaws a tiny bit when, when I gave the tour last time, but just to show that there's a range of dinosaur, dinosaur jigsaws out there. So these are ones are from uh, the US. This is from another set from the US, and this is from Switzerland. So you can, uh, you can buy these if you want to. They're, they're obviously more publicity material. And I just put in a nice magnet that was shown here, promotional magnet for this T-Rex set, which I had, it's not on the website, so I don't quite know where it came from, but I managed to pick that up once again on eBay. Another thing that we, we talked about last time, and one of the ladies actually showed her example of it, but I just wanted to share it with everybody as this fantastic 3D puzzle. So this was also issued with this new T-Rex issue from the, the States in 1919. So first of all, they issued this great cutout head that you can build yourself and build this 3D design. And then they also, once again, they use this very nice colored postmark. So that's quite novel, very similar to what was done with China. But they also issued these lenticular stamps. So two of them, when you move them around, it looks as though the dinosaur's moving. So it gives a very 3D effect. Local issues have uh, really blossomed in the last few years. And I've just got examples from Brazil and Germany here. So Brazil, this, these, what happened was that people issue their own private stamps and they make their own private stamp designs like you can do in a lot of countries. 
And then the Brazilian Post looks at these designs and the ones that they think are the best and they really like, they will then issue them as a, a officially sanctioned design. And that's what happened to these two dinosaur stamps. Someone designed them and then the, the Brazilian Post said, yeah, we really like those. We're going to make them into sheets. So this is what they look like in the sheets. So you can buy these whole sheets with these designs at the top as well. And then Germany has also had some private issues, and Michael Kogan, who's uh, on this line here, he can probably tell you more about these, but I just wanted to put them in to show that some lovely dinosaur stamps are being issued. These are self-adhesive stamps, but they're being issued as by private entities who, they're still valid for posts, so if you use this stamp, then this company who issued the stamps will then deliver your post for you. And then there's some pretty wacky inclusions in stamps. And this is something that was issued by Liechtenstein just this year, where they included a small stone on the stamp. So I don't know how you'd really use those postally. It's hard to imagine. But the idea is that this epidote, this uh, mineral here, it was actually formed at the same time as the dinosaurs. This is a pretty rare item as well, that, that this uh, Chinese issue from 2001 they included a uh, fossil fish. So that there's a dinosaur shown on here on the, on the cache, but they included a fossil fish in there as well from, uh, that came from China. And finally, I've just been, there's lots of coin covers around these days for all sorts of themes. But this is a pretty old one. This is from 1993. And this was a set of six stamps that were issued. All of them had their own coin. And uh, you can see that they've lacquered the coins so that they show up really nicely. I'm going to finish off by talking about a little bit of drama in Canada. So this was an issue that was issued on July the 3rd, 2015, and they issued a, a set of stamps for the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And what's happened was when they issued this stamp on July the 3rd, they showed this picture for Dinosaur Provincial Park. And that's great, except for one problem. This picture was not taken in Dinosaur Provincial Park. This was taken in Drumheller, which is about 100 kilometers away from the park. So they realized pretty quickly that they'd made a mistake. Lots of people phoned up to say, oh, by the way, you made a mistake here. And so the, the stamps were all recalled on July the 6th, and everything was destroyed. So that was it. However, then they reissued the stamps on July, August the 21st with a new issue that was actually a photograph that was really taken in Dinosaur Provincial Park. But as always happens with these things, a few first day covers and booklets slip through the net. And this is some examples here. So this is the first day cover, the first day cover that was supposed to be used for the issue, but showing our hoodoos from Drumheller, rather than showing the nice picture here from Dinosaur Provincial Park. There's a booklet as well. And these booklets, it's funny, you can pick them up for 30 bucks or you can pay 300 bucks. It depends which site you go to online. And the biggest prize of all, was the maxi cards because the maxi cards you couldn't buy them in the post office they hadn't been delivered yet to the post office so the only way that you could get a maxi card was if you were on the subscribers list and you got sent the maxi cards in advance so there's probably less than 10 of these maxi cards that are out there some of them were stopped before they were posted out so this is one of those very rare items they're listed for about 800 dollars right now so they're very hard to get hold of and this is what the correct postcard should look like so this is the the incorrect postcard but where the real irony comes in is back in 1972, Canada Post issued a prepaid postcard which actually showed the hoodoo. So it's almost exactly the same picture. So in this occasion, when you look at the text here, it says hoodoos, drumhella, nice landmark. And yet here they, they issued basically exactly the same postcard, but for the wrong place. So if they would just looked back at their older postcards, they would have realized that they'd made that mistake. So in conclusion, and I'm just before we conclude, this is a warning not to smoke. So no smoking warning for a great cover from Germany. Gesundheit here, which means health. And there's a, well, this is what's going to happen to you if you smoke. You're going to turn into a dinosaur skeleton. So just to conclude, this hobby has been part of my life for nearly 30 years. And I've loved the challenge of finding new items to fill the gaps in my collection. And you just never know what's going to turn up. Some things never turn up, and some things never even existed in the first place. There's a few first day covers that I've been looking for that I don't even know whether there was really a first day cover issued. I've learned an awful lot about hunting down items and how to bid smart online. And I would just say to everybody that there's lots of areas of caution here. It's not like they're really intentionally fake, but there's things like add-on caches and things like that that if you didn't know, you'd just think, oh, that's a great dinosaur issue, and you wouldn't have realized that it's actually something that's been added onto the cover. 
And then there's quite a few little fakes out there. There's lots of Cinderella's and things as well. So just use caution when you're putting your collection together. I would love to set up a special dinosaur interest group, and maybe that's something that I can discuss with the APS. And I'd love to meet other thematic collectors who are collecting other themes so that we can share tips and talk about our triumphs and failures. Because I, I already mentioned last time that I have a, friend, a lady who friend who collects horses on stamps. And when I met her for the first time, it was fascinating to talk to her and hear that she had exactly the same challenges filling her collection up that I had with my collection. So finally, I just want to wish everybody luck with the collecting and thank you so much for listening. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, my you're, pleasure. you're getting rounds of applause what a fascinating i mean it's so visually appealing the the story is so rich and varied and uh it's like candy it's just it is it, it's so much fun and to see all the designs and how it's interpreted around the world and like those glow in the dark out of china those are so cool yeah, I, I love the fact that the, the, the different countries have their own styles. And sometimes you see the same artist as designed for more than one country, but you can definitely tell the Southeast Asian stamps in comparison to what we're seeing from the West. We, we have a totally different approach how to do the artwork. And, and then that cancellation, that one that you said, or that hand stamp that you got, uh, where was it, Korea? Korea, yeah, yeah. yeah what a great find. And if I told you how much that cost, I think I paid twelve dollars for it. <laughs> so you don't have to spend a lot of money. You just have to be be there and check things out. And when you do see something, try and snap it up. You're really good at that. You're really good at the hunt for sure. Uh, let's see, Austin Giles, do you want to uh, unmute yourself and have some time? Ask me a question. So we got the um, T Rex uh, first day of issue. Should they have postmarks on them? That you know that the the thing is that that red picture on there that actually is the postmark. So they okay. did they did two different postmarks. They did a normal black one, and then they did that special colored one. So you have the special colored one. So you have it. To me, that's better than the normal postmark. Right. Thank you. And then you also said that your post office receives wanna... uh, those little magnets you were talking about mm -hmm. of the yep. stamp. Um, they receive those um, to show the stamp that they will be receiving. So the Clifford post office um, is a little closer than ours. Uh, and they have a whole wall of just magnets. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, because sure. I, I found it on online. I, I got it from eBay and the guy charged me twelve dollars or something. And I thought, well, that looks to me like a promotional item that's probably a freebie, but I'm, it's not. I don't live in the States, so I'm not going to have the chance to get it uh, otherwise. You can buy them at USPS.com. OK, also. good. Yeah. And um, if you wanted to get something postmarked, um, from dinosaur is it colorado does that still exist yeah okay yes yeah okay. they are the most helpful people in the world and it's funny because michael asked me how i went about getting this postmark and i actually phoned them beforehand and i said would you mind if i sent you this envelope it's going to have some money in it and i just sent i actually sent cash even though you're not really supposed to and it's going to have a, a, my self-addressed envelope. And please, can you stick the dinosaur stamps on it and then postmark it? And they did it all for me. So they were really incredibly helpful. All right. So that's, awesome. that's a great way to get that postmark, which, yeah, online you're going to pay big bucks for and you're basically getting it for free. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. And Michael Kogan is saying, right, you you can't you you stay muted yeah, i think it's a very beautiful presentation well done john usps issued over three dozen dinosaur postmarks in 2019. wow that's a lot that is a lot and and michael is much more an expert on the postmarks than i am 
I think that's just it. That that's. Do you like to? Do you like to? You must enjoy finding the postmarks and the stamps, correct? Yes, he has lost it on his site. I, I, it's kind of funny because I've I've been looking for this dinosaur city postmarks for years, and the the dealer that I've found a couple of them from has all these other cool postmarks, and it's outside my theme, and it's just. It's, scary because you start looking at them and, I, and I, I bought I bought a couple of them I bought Valentine because I thought that's so cool there's a place called Valentine and uh, and I bought Fossil Oregon and and you're looking at all these cool places in the states that have their own postmarks a lot of them aren't open anymore the post offices and yeah it's easy to get sucked in that's a whole nother collection just waiting to happen yes yes that's a that is a whole other ball of yes. So you bring it. You bring those dinosaurs. You bring it. You unearth a lot. Oh, and Michael Kogan is sharing his website, friends, so that we can have a look. Great. Anyone else have a question or a comment? If you guys have any other questions or, or, or comments, you can ask Michael or you can ask me as well. And Heidi has my email address, so you can always just send me an email if you have any questions. I do, and, but, but excuse, uh, Van Siegling would like to speak. Go ahead and unmute yourself, honey. Thank you. Um, I am known around the US as the Harry Potter exhibitor, so some of you might have seen my work there. Well, but well, I also but I also have a major, a large collection of dinosaur material. Now I've noticed the Fran Adams is on this call and he has a gold level award-winning exhibit on, just on T-Rex, uh, a, a single frame, but it's beautiful. And it's on, that's on the internet, several places, I do believe. I have also seen an exhibit from Dr. Uh, Susan Jones out of the Chicago area on coelacanths mm. and she actually got the original letters from the lady who ran the museum where it was first identified. Wow. Right. Now, I happen to be the president of the Columbus Philatelic Club and I'm the show manager for Colopex, which is a World Series of Philately show. Right now, we are in a rather tight room. It's a really nice facility, but it's tight. I have a committee working on finding a new place that will be larger. And what I would like to do is work with uh, you and Mike and several others. I'm thinking in two or three years' time, once I've found a new site, we might want to do, call it a symposium on dinosaurs on stamps. Cool. And encourage everyone who does exhibits to come to Colopex for that year. So that it's all, so that we have everyone together. Dinopex. Correct, basically. You know, that would be a sub, you know, Although, a yeah. subset of the World Series of Philately Show. Yeah, there's lots of other nice paleo stuff. It's not just dino. I, I stick to dinosaurs because otherwise I'd be bankrupt. But uh, mm -hmm. there's mammals, there's coelacanths, there's fossils, there's minerals, there's volcanoes. It just goes on and on. So, yeah, you're right. That that would be a great idea. I, I was planning to put together a five frame exhibit for this year, but the, the, the obviously the show was cancelled. It was in Edmonton, but uh, that was going to be my. I've only ever done one frame once, so that that was end of last year. So I, I'm kind of getting into the exhibiting. So yeah, I'd love to be involved, and I'm sure Michael would as well. I know his website's won quite a lot of awards at different uh, stamp shows. So certainly from the website point of view, he's he's had a lot of success. Okay, we did not see a good picture of your exhibit in the show last time. What is your exhibit about? Uh, it's it basically it, it's uh, just one frame. It's got 16 pages, and it, it talks about what dinosaurs do. So it's di dinosaurs hunting, dinosaurs nesting, dinosaurs walking, dinosaurs the different things that dinosaurs do. Okay, I am working on the one of my single frames that's closest to being finished is dinosaur footprints. Oh, nice. And yeah, I bought some of the other original artwork from Clive. 
for the footprint from Lesotho. And I'm also working on stegosaurs and triceratops. Oh, I'll be very interested to see that artwork from uh, Lesotho. He says jealously. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I I put my email in the uh, chat, you know, in case worst case scenario, that's the way, and I can link you guys up, and then you you know run run. Although keep me in the loop too, because uh, you know I'm sure that we have ABS members that would love to see more dinosaurs and be kept in the loop. So, uh, um, and Michael Cogan's here. He's just blowing up the chat box here with all sorts of cool um links so friends you might want to click over there or take a screenshot of this while they're up the only problem for me personally is that i was just recently accepted as an apprentice philatelic judge by aps wow so, congratulations so i gotta find four shows that actually come off <laughs> and be an apprentice at <laughs> That's yeah, wonderful. It is interesting when you have topical collections that the people who are judging you, I, I, I mean, I think it's very good and pure because it's almost no chance that they collect your theme so they can look at your, your uh, exhibit much more dispassionately than you can. Sometimes it helps and sometimes it hurts, I've discovered. Yeah. yeah. Francis Adams writes, congratulations, Ben Siegling on your mm -hmm. apprenticeship, that's great. Maybe you wanna talk a little bit about that, about showing. We have a young person on the line and I'm not even gonna presume that everyone on the line here shows, you know. You wanna talk a little bit about what the frame is and, you know, okay. more general, I'm, that would be great. I'm willing to do that. Most Please. of the major shows have, call it a kids section, young adult section and so that is major encouragement for uh, people i want to say usually under the age of either 18 or 21 it depends on what the cutoff is to put together something and they are judged separately usually with a slightly different set of standards so you're not competing against the adults which would not be fair with it. Um, most commonly, they do 16 pages, a sing what we call a single frame. But I have seen some that were longer. I've seen uh, three and five frame uh, kids exhibits. Sometimes they're just the stamps. Sometimes they're much more complicated. Uh, kind of depends on how much help they get from the, their parents or from the club that they're a member of. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can, if you have a local club, though, that is a major source of help for young collectors. Because if the club knows what you are working on, almost everyone in that club will keep their eyes open for material for you. And that's what I've noticed about once I got into exhibiting personally. By that, when the dealers realized I truly was serious about this, they'd pull thing, you know, when they bought a collection and they saw something, they'd pull it aside and wait for the next show where they saw me. And I got incredible material because dealers happened to know what I was collecting or working on. So, yeah. uh, I just, I just said uh, in in the chat here that you can go to the stamps.org under community and you can find clubs. Yeah, mm -hmm. that they're invaluable, obviously. Right, right. Uh, so yes, if uh, if our uh, youngster on here in the talk can convince his parents there to get him to a club, that will help him out dramatically. He will learn a lot both about stamps and in this case you'll learn a lot about dinosaurs and other prehistoric life now, I should just say, if i can just butt in i i, I when i exhibited at the calgary Cal, caltepex is called when i exhibited there last year there was only one junior entry and she won the junior section <laughs> obviously yeah 
<laughs> her, her subject was butterflies. Yeah, there are a lot of the juniors uh, start in uh, topicals or thematics, which is perfectly fine. Um, I have seen a few recently who have actually been working on uh, stamp series. Uh, so those will get a little more attention from the judges, but those are also the much older exhibitors. So with, with that, uh, to anyone else on the chat here, if, uh, you know, come up to uh, the, the, when you go to the dealers and you say, hey, I collect dinosaurs, do you know of anyone else in the room who also works dinosaurs? And they will often point to people like John or to Fran or to me, or probably to, to Mike also, saying, yeah, talk to those guys. And we'll be, I'm certain all of us are friendly enough with uh, uh, other collectors to help them as much as we can. You know, uh, point them out, tell them what the differences are. Like with uh, a thematic exhibit, we often look for different elements. And, and John's done a good job of showing some of the different things. Uh, one thing that you missed, John, were... Um, perfins or pre-cancels because I've picked up quite a number of those uh, from the city or the closest post office to the dinosaur dig site. So uh, that's something to also look for. Sorry to blow your budget, but they're pretty cheap usually. <laughs> Love that. So with that, I'll... I'll uh, mute off and let someone else talk. <laughs> no, that was fun. No, that's what these stamp chats are all about. You know, that's what this whole you know twenty minutes is for for to see where it's you know it's very casual, so that's good. And we learn new things from that discussion. Francis Adams says Fossil Oregon has several older pre cancels, so that's you can be aware of that. Well, it is that spirit of fraternity and sharing of knowledge and expanding the schema that really defines our hobby, I think. Um, so I want to thank you so much, Dr. John Node, for this incredibly beautiful, insightful, enthusiastic presentation that will undoubtedly remain evergreen on our YouTube channel. Remember, you can watch, uh, re-watch, and share this chat with your friends on APS YouTube under the stamp chat playlist. Um, our next stamp chat is at 7 p.m. and we will be switching gears entirely to the Civil War uh, with Mr. Leon Reed. He has joined us before. This is part one talking about patriotic covers. And on Wednesday, we'll have an APS member, Hal Turner, talking with us about Lindbergh and Amelia Earhart. That'll be at 3 p.m. on Wednesday. Otherwise, we have our chat tonight. Friends, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, remember to go over to stamps.org. Summer seminar is happening right now. Those are online workshops uh, going through postal history or through uh, Franklin's and a, a whole hodgepodge, 50 different classes. So you'll want to check that out at stamps.org. And in terms of adding to your collection, your dinosaur collection, I have a feeling you're going to want to go check out stampstore.org. We have over 350,000 pieces of post and uh, postal ephemera. So I'm sure we can help you add to your collection there. That's APS member and dealer that can sell and buy there. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Dr. John. Thank you, everybody, for participating and for your membership. We'll see you next time on Stamp Chat, either at 7 p.m. tonight or on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, friends. Happy International Dinosaur Day. Thanks, everyone. Bye, friends. Thanks. Bye.